Well, hello, hello. So I did have a request from Linda Bell, and she asked if I could do an edit on either horses or dogs. And I have shot several, both, but for this, I thought that I would use this lovely picture of, I think, oh, her name is Willow. So she's a little girl and let's get into it. Okay, so right now I am in Adobe Camera Raw and as you can see, there have been zero adjustments to this image. So all I'm gonna do starting is pull the highlights down because I don't want them to be too blown out. I'm gonna move up my shadows and you're probably thinking this is something you do in every image. Well, pretty much. Um, I'm gonna pull my exposure down a bit as well and now I'm going to hit the crop and I'm just going to come in and crop this, maybe something like this. I don't want to go too far up here because I don't want to crop off her tail. Pull this down a little bit. I, I like to crop images more in the Instagram kind of format only because especially for an image that I know I'm not gonna be printing and I'm not going to print this one so now I'm gonna go into my little masking tool here in Adobe Camera Raw and I'm gonna select my subject and I love this subject selector it is amazing and then I'm gonna hit these little three dots, click invert, and I'm just gonna reduce the exposure to the background. Something like that, I think will be good. Click open. And obviously if you shot your animal or your dog or whatever outside, it would be an entirely different beginning, but because this is a studio shot, I always like to darken down the background. Duplicate my layer, Command J, and now what I'm gonna do is grab a soft brush, this one, and I'm just gonna start sampling the darker areas of this part of the backdrop. And I'm gonna just paint away these areas that are not very desirable and they're taking your attention away from willow. So what I like to do is just sample between the two colors and just paint it on and that usually will give me a relatively good version of what I'm looking for. So right now you can see I'm at 100 opacity, 100 flow. Normally in a situation like this I might use a lesser flow but for this tutorial, I'm just gonna go with it and show you how I would do it. So the mixer brush will come handy for all of this other stuff, but for the most part, this is a good start. And I'm just gonna paint that all the way over here. Okay, so this is pretty much good to go. Go ahead and flatten, duplicate my layer. I'm going to grab my patch tool and I'm just going to get rid of this seam in the backdrop. Anything that takes attention away from the viewer's eye, you probably want to get rid of. something like that. I'm going to go ahead and flatten, duplicate my layer, Command or Control J, and now I'm going to use my mixer brush. And if you don't know how to use the mixer brush, like I always say, you can go to my Teachable School and I have a full course on mixer brush for beginners, so I'm not going to get into that here. Um, I do want my wet a little higher, around 43 no mix and my flow at 24 is always good 
And now what I'm going to do is just make my brush a little bit bigger about this size and I'm just going to do little circles on the edges. And the reason for that is because I really want it to just blend in with that edge. So usually the mixer brush requires little tiny baby circles. And the size of your brush will affect the area that you are working with. So I'm going to darken this all down to here. So I'm not going to worry about doing that with the mixer brush because it's time consuming and it's not exact, but I do want to blend the edges and the mixer brush is perfect for that. Because I can come in with just a basic brush and darken the rest. But the mixer brush is really good for wrinkles. So if you have wrinkles like these, they're going to really help quickly soften them and in many instances just get rid of them completely. So if you're not familiar with the mixer brush, I highly recommend my course and learning a little bit more about it. Again, I'm not going to focus too much on getting rid of the dark and the light just because it's easier to do with a basic brush than it is with the mixer brush. So anywhere that you see texture that you don't want around, you can just do quick circles and it'll soften all of the texture. So don't be afraid to do that. like so. Okay, go ahead and flatten. Now I'm going to use my Dodge Burn from my retouch set and I'm going to use my burn tool, go back to a basic soft brush. I don't want my flow at 100. I'm going to go around 15 and now I can just start painting that dark on. reduce it down to about 10. So every time you use the curves adjustment for darkening, it's going to alter the, um, the saturation of your image. Okay. So just keep that in mind. And I'm going to go really heavy handed here now because I can always adjust using my opacity slider and a lot of times it's just easier to do it that way. And if you're wondering, I'm working on a Wacom tablet or a Wacom or however you want to pronounce it. And I would never personally use a mouse for editing. And once I think you get more involved in the entire editing process, you will realize that using a Wacom or a Wacom tablet is definitely easier because it's like drawing with a pen or a pencil. So we're just darkening down the edges and creating a bit of a vignette around Willow. And now I can come here and I can reduce this. I'm gonna actually change my flow to around four and just paint off some of this round the perimeter. Like that. 
I think that's pretty good. I'm going to reduce the size of my brush and just come in and paint back some of the light on her fur. And reduce. I do want a little bit more here. You can see some banding starting to happen, but don't worry because we are working in 16-bit, right guys? So banding is not typically an issue when you're working in 16-bit. 8-bit, it can be a problem. Okay. Go ahead and flatten. Now I'm going to do just a blank layer above and I'm going to sample this color and come in and start just painting this exact color onto our image. this. So as I sample the lighter colors, I can really start to blend this vignette around Willow. So something like that. Good, good. Flatten. Okay, so now that we've pretty much fixed the entire canvas of this image, now comes the actual retouching. So, Command or Control J to duplicate my layer. I'm going to come up into Liquify, and you're probably like, what are you doing? You're liquefying a dog. Well, yeah, because the dog's fur is not perfect, and I want it to be more appealing to the eye. So I'm just going to fluff her up and get rid of, you know, divots and stuff that maybe would look better if we floofed them or pushed them in or what have you. So something like this. Okay, click OK. So that's before and after. See how we just floofed her up? And I know a lot of people are like, why would you do that? But don't you think that looks better? I think it does. Okay, now I'm just going to duplicate my layer and I'm going to come into Filter, Camera Raw Filter. And now I'm going to look at my clarity and push it up because we really want that fur to pop. I'm going to reduce the highlights down just a bit again and you can play with your temperature in here. Um, I do prefer a cooler look even though her fur is more on the ginger side but I think that's nice. Click OK and let's just look at the before and the after. I will zoom in so you can see her better. So before and after. So it's a little more defined. Flatten. And you know, there's, there's a whole ton of trendy different ways to edit pet photography, but this is a studio shot, so it should be a little bit more classical. So I'm going to stick with that. Um, I do love that Adobe Camera Raw manipulation in the background um, but in this image here you can look and you can see that she's warm right because she's orangey ginger and the background is blue so it's cool so you have that good contrast amongst the colors so that works 
actually quite well. So duplicate your layer, Command or Control J, and I'm going to go ahead and play my dodge burn again and click on my burn. And I'm at 4% flow with 100% opacity, so I'm just going to come in using this burn tool and just burn down the various parts of her fur that I don't really need to be bright. This should help with a little bit more 3D effect. So just keep in mind that dodging and burning are just as important with pet portraits as they are with people. You can really control the shadows and the highlights and what you want to go back and what you want to come forward. So for this we're looking at increasing the shadows and focusing on the light being a little bit more 3D. And this is just the way that I do it. You obviously don't have to, but this is definitely going to make your work stand out from others because not a lot of people will take the time to do this. But she's so fluffy. What a fluffy girl. I'll probably just burn down this bright area behind her here too. Just it'll kind of focus all of the light just a little bit more on this part of her, which I think will end up looking pretty cool when we're done. So you just really want to focus on darkening the shadows and the darker areas so that you get more of that 3D look. Now I'm going to go to my dodge layer, zoom in, and just add the highlights on her nose, because she's got a cute nose. And if you're worried that you don't know how to dodge and burn correctly, just keep in mind that it takes a lot of time practicing and working on it. It's not something that's going to happen for you overnight. So just keep working on it and playing and you will get it. I'm going to increase my flow to around 20. Reduce the size of my brush. And I'm going to highlight the liquid in her eye. Tiny little more specular dots on her nose. I'm just doing kind of brush strokes here on her eyebrow to bring out the highlights a little bit more. Probably not the best haircut I've ever seen on a dog, <laughs> but that's okay. Just add a little bit of light to her fur on the right. Now I'm just using a big brush to add in a little bit of highlights to the fur.
Okay, so let's just take a look, close the group before and after. Do you see how we've really defined her now? So you can reduce the overall group, something like that, and flatten. And honestly, because dog portraits are really basic, there's not a whole bunch of editing that you have to do. I wouldn't worry about going a little heavier with this. I'm going to click my dodge burn one more time because I've noticed that in here it's still a little too bright compared to this part here. And I'm definitely going a little heavy handed and over the edges but I can just reduce in here to make it kind of match which works. Okay. Go ahead and flatten. So at this point, you just take a step back, take a look, see what you need to have done. Um, there's a couple things you could do. So we're just gonna play, duplicate your layer, go into Adobe Camera Raw, and I'm gonna go to my masking, select subject, and invert it. And now I'm gonna reduce my background a little bit but I also want my blacks to come up I want that background to be a little bit more matted we can increase the contrast a bit something like that I wouldn't mind a vignette but I don't think there is a vignette there's not what if we use clarity well we don't really want clarity we definitely don't care about texture if we dehaze it, we can add a little bit of matte to it, which might be nice. We're going to go back to our, our pup, and now we're going to add some clarity to her. Add a little bit of highlight. Reduce the blacks a bit. Click OK. See the difference? Just kind of evens everything out. So now I'm just going to flatten this, duplicate my layer, go to Filter, Alien Skin, Exposure 4. So in this filter section here you can decide so many different things you might want to do but I usually start with my layer and reset because a lot of times it just doesn't act right unless you reset it. I do like this one I like the high contrast but you can see that the grain is way over the top so I'm going to reduce the roughness of the grain and the overall strength. We don't want too much grain Something more like that works. If we mat out the blacks by pulling our curves up like this, it can give a totally different look to your image. You just have to decide what it is that you want to do, right? But I definitely want to increase my clarity now, reduce my highlights a little bit, and sharpen it. So by holding down my Alter Option key and moving my mask slider over, we can see exactly where the sharpening is being affected, which is right here. And that's pretty perfect. But if we move our blacks up a bit, something like that. Click Apply. Now I'm just going to reduce the opacity. Right about 55 I think is good. Go ahead and flatten. And now it's just personal preference and creativity, whatever it is that you want to do, right? Like, for instance, let's say I add a solid color 
right into this and I want like a brown, darker brown, not so bright like about this. Now if I click on my mask and I use a black brush, I can just bring her back. And a lot of people would probably just stop here because it's cute, right? You have to remember that these are images of pets that are very much like our babies. And so your clients will want all of the attention to be on their cute little faces. And even though we did shoot her with her whole body, it's not very important because just like a child or just like a portrait, what you really want is the focus to be on your pet's face or their pet's face, right? So if we go into properties now and feather that right out and we turn that on and off, you can see that that's actually a lot more impactful than if we were to show her entire body, right? So just reduce the size of your brush and maybe paint a little bit more of her on something like that. I like to really make sure that all the black mask is off of her face and right around her. Before and after. And I think that's nice. Latin. And this is an image that anyone who loves their pet will love. I'm just going to change my crop a bit now because we've changed it so much in here. But what I do want to do is just grab a little bit more of that brown color and fade it in. something like that. So we're going to go ahead and flatten and duplicate my layer and come back into alien skin. And now we'll do some different tweaks. So here we are in alien skin with Willow and all it's done is defaulted to the last filter that we used, right? And we don't want that. So I'm going to come up here and go layer reset and then start seeing which filter matches this particular look better. I actually like that one. So what I'm going to do is again come down to my overall grain strength and turn it right off. I'm going to come up here to my highlights and pull them down, pull my blacks up, shadows up a little bit, whites down a little bit, clarity up a smidge, and I want to go to my vignette because I would like my vignette to be a little darker. Like right now it's brown. So I'm just going to place where I want this vignette to be. Right about here. Reduce it a bit. If we go into our colors, like here, we know that this area surrounding her is blue, so we'll pull up our blues and our cyans because I'm really not sure which it is. It could be even greens. But what we also could do is increase the oranges in her fur and a little bit of the reds. Go back to our sharpening option. And I think that's good. Hit apply. So the difference is pretty severe. And I think it's super cute. So cute. Right? I hope you enjoyed this. If you have any other requests, please feel free to reach out or comment in the description below. And I'll see you in the next video.